opposition to the nuclear power plants uh, locally has highlighted very, very crucial issues. The issues have to deal with livelihoods, they have to deal with safety, they have to deal with the overall uh, totally unaccountable, non-transparent, unsafe uh, working culture in which the nuclear industry operates in India. They have to deal with uh, the, the issues raised have to deal, do with some inherent problems with the nuclear energy. The issues which the anti-nuclear movement in India has been raising have also to do with the uh, absurdity of uh, painting nuclear energy as clean and green and a solution for climate change. So when we talk about anti-nuclear movement in India, it has a range of issues, wide-ranging issues and ultimately it has to do with democracy of India. It has to do with uh, the kind of development that the people of India, the common people of India, the farmers, fisher folk, they need. Uh, I would briefly add to what uh, uh, Priya said. Uh, apart from the seismicity and other specific problem in Jayatapur, the problem is also uh, related to the fact that in India we have no experience whatsoever in uh, setting up and running these power plants. Uh, the EPR design, European Pressurized Reactors, six of them which uh, the NPCIL is setting up are designed by uh, French company Arriva. Uh, these are totally untested reactors. The only other place where uh, Arriva is constructing these reactors is Finland and China. Uh, in China it has not even started but in Finland uh, the Finnish government and its re nuclear regulator has taken Areva to the court because in their country the Areva's EPR project has run into uh, double the cost and time overrun. Uh, and our Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi, went last year to Paris, concluded uh, the uh, agreement with a uh, French company. Uh, on the same week, in the same week, just two days before Narendra Modi's visit, the French nuclear regulator itself, the ASN, which is the French nuclear regulator, it came up with a report uh, of its post-Fukushima safety audit. And in that report, it has scathingly criticized uh, this particular design. Uh, in a place called Flammerville in France, uh, Arriva has been trying to construct the EPR. EPR is a very, very complicated design and the French nuclear regulator has found problems, crucial uh, safety vulnerabilities with the uh, uh, reactor pressure vessel of this particular design. So even the French nuclear regulator is not in a position to claim and to, to be assured about safety of its, this particular design. This is also a time in which Areva is run, has run into a terminal financial crisis. Post Fukushima, the entire global nuclear industry is uh, facing a terminal decline. The, uh, uh, the decline started much before Fukushima, but Fukushima has exacerbated it because a number of countries post Fukushima have opted uh, um, to move away from nuclear energy and to opt for renewable and sustainable forms of uh, energy sources. Uh, in that background, the crisis which Areva is forcing, uh, facing and the French utility EDF has now to take over some of the business of Areva. So Areva is in bad shape. The French nuclear regulator itself is criticizing this design and India ironically is going ahead with the same design. Uh, Achin mentioned about AERB. Uh, AERB has no experience, it cannot wait for the safety of this particular design that India is uh, bent on uh, importing. So basically we are joining the French nuclear ship which is shink sinking. Uh, it's also important to note that the French government uh, last to last year in its uh, overall energy transition policy has opted to move away from nuclear energy in the interim and they have said that in the next 25 years they will reduce their reliance on nuclear energy from the current 75% to 50%. So the world's biggest uh, nuclear industry which is in France uh, and France has been the poster boy of global nuclear industry lobbies itself is reducing its reliance on nuclear energy. Coming back to India, in India we have problems of regulation, our AERB is not independent. We have problem site specific issues. So in Kudankulam, there are design specific and site specific issues. In Jaitapur, we have issues. In Jaitapur, uh, thousands of fisher folk are going to be displaced by this project. Uh, thousands of uh, fisher folk because 
this six EPRs would raise the local sea temperature by five to seven degrees, which will make fishing in the area totally impossible. Also, the security apparatus which will come around the nuclear power plant will disallow farmer, uh, fisher folk uh, from fishing in the five kilometer radius. So this means an immediate destruction of livelihood for at least 40,000 fisher folk in these villages called Nate, Sakri Nate and other fishing villages. So these people are constantly protesting. It's also important to highlight here that the people who get compensation for this project are only uh, farmers. So farmers who are losing their land, some of them have got compensation uh, and uh, fisher folk have not got any compensation. They will lose their livelihood immediately. Uh, what will also happen in Jaitapur that uh, the mango cultivators, Jaitapur uh, is located in Konkan, which is a biodiversity hotspot of India. It's actually one of the 10 biodiversity hotspots in the entire world. And we have world's famous Alfonso mangoes there. Thousands of um, Alfonso uh, cultivators are going to be affected because uh, their export license to some of the European countries will get terminated. Uh, European countries have very stringent uh, uh, specifications and they don't import Alfonso or any uh, edible products from areas which have nuclear power plants. So their business is going to be affected. Uh, then there are another uh, thousands of people who are engaged into uh, supplying equipments, who are engaged into supplying services to this agro-business and the agrarian community. So it has a large implication on the people in the surrounding area in Jaitapur. Uh, Jaitapur, Konkan are very, very fragile ecologies. We have also had this entire battle where uh, no, government's own committee on uh, the Konkan, Konkan area have highlighted how vulnerable it is uh, and how rich is the biodiversity in Konkan. But the previous government constituted yet another committee under the former ISRO chairman and he said, no, everything is fine. So it's nuclear plus other several uh, power plants in that region which are going to affect uh, the entire Konkan region. So these are issues which are at stake today. So as we speak here today, it's important to highlight that on 26 January, on India's Republic Day, uh, the uh, duty of the government should be to protect the interests of the common Indian people. Last year on 26 January, the same government uh, effectively surrendered Indian people's right to sue the nuclear suppliers because President Obama was here. And this year we are hearing that they will further this disastrous nuclear deal with France. So it's very unfortunate. The people of India, the citizens of India are not going to accept this. These nuclear agreements are totally unacceptable for this to us. And our protest will continue, will make sure that this, uh, the, the people of India, the common people, farmers, fisher folk, they don't have to meet with accident and the disastrous consequences of this insane nuclear expansion that the government is ex uh, uh, undertaking.